in this lecture actually I will classify the low dimensional Lie algebras. So, let us try to classify uh, <coughs> the Lie algebras uh, over complex numbers of dimension 1, 2 and 3 ok. Let us see how far we can go. So, uh, the one dimensional Lie algebra is somewhat easy to classify ok. So, we fix G to be a Lie algebra over complex numbers. If uh, the dimension of G is 1, then it is easy to see that G is actually isomorphic to just this one dimensional space complex numbers with the trivial Lie product ok, because G is abelian ok. The second thing, so let us look at dimension 2 Lie algebra. So, again there are two cases possible, one is abelian, another one is non-abelian. So, abelian Lie algebras we understand, so we can assume that uh, G is being non-abelian ok. For example, how the abelian will look like, abelian will look like, so if it is abelian, so it is just uh, spanned by two elements such that the products will look like bracket x y is 0, bracket x x, bracket x y y will be 0. Okay. So, like we said in one of the lectures, it is enough to actually give structure constant uh, to give entire Lie product, okay, that is what we are doing. So, I will leave it to you to check uh, because uh, there is nothing to check here because this is a trivial product. So, this will give you Lie algebra. So, now what will be the non abelian case? Okay. So, the non abelian case is actually is again not uh, that hard, but let us see one example first and then we will actually uh, get to get to into the classification. So, here is one nice subalgebra of SL to C which is two dimensional ok. So, you take SL to C, so which is nothing but what which is uh, uh, 3 by 3 matrices which are traceless ok. Then what is the dimension of uh, SL to C? So, so sorry this is 2 by 2 matrices. <coughs> So, this is uh, the dimension is 2 square minus 1, so which is 3 and there is a natural uh, basis which we fix. Okay. So, fix the basis, what is the basis? We call it X which is the upper triangular matrix and then H is 1 0 0 minus 1 and Y as this lower triangular matrix. So, this is these are all in inside SL to C and that will form a basis ok. So, now what we do we take this uh, C span of this lower triangular matrix 0 0 1 0 and half times this H 1 0 0 minus 1. So, this is sitting inside SL to C. So, this is a naturally a vector space. Now, it is not hard to verify the bracket that we have commutative bracket on SL to C will give you Lie algebra structure on this. So, that means this is a Lie subalgebra of SL to C. So, how to verify this? Let us verify this uh, 0 0 1 0 using the elementary matrices. This is just E 2 1 and this is nothing but of times E 1 1 minus E 2 2. So, if you compute the Lie bracket E 2 1 comma of E 1 1 minus E 2 2, you can see that this immediately gives E 2 1 ok. So, this is a simple check. So, that means <coughs> these are all the Lie brackets on this uh, subalgebra.
So, E 2 1 E 2 1 commutes and uh, this uh, of E 1 1 minus E 2 2 that also commutes and when you take bracket between them you get E 2 1 back. Okay. So, these are all the brackets. So, indeed we prove now that uh, any two dimensional algebra will be isomorphic to this algebra okay, that is the result. Okay. So, for that let us start with uh, uh, G which is uh, two dimensional Lie algebra. So, we assume that G is not abelian. Okay. So, what is our claim? Our claim this G is isomorphic to may be call this as G to non abelian. Okay. Non abelian. So, that is what I am calling it. So, G will be isomorphic to G to non abelian. So, for that we need to establish the basis of this G that will have similar this uh, Lie product that is there for G 2 non abelian. Okay, Let us uh, try to do that. First of all uh, recall what is this derived algebra. So, this derived algebra is nothing but span of all these commutators okay, where x y comes from G. So, it is easy to see this derived algebra. Okay, so, this is the derived algebra over yeah, the derived algebra of G. So, then this derived algebra is an ideal inside G and we also have this center. Okay. So, this is the center, this is those G and G such that the bracket x G is 0. So, this is the center, this is also an ideal inside G. Okay. We have these two important ideals inside G. Now, let us try to use them and then see what happens. Okay. Uh, now, this uh, G is not abelian that means the derived algebra must be non-zero. Okay. So, G is not abelian that implies the derived algebra is non-zero and actually it is not hard to give uh, the following characterization. Okay. G is abelian, so the following are equivalent G is abelian and the derived algebra is 0 and the center is full and the fourth thing is add x map is 0 for all x in g. Okay. Similarly, you can also say add map is identically 0. Okay. So, these are all the characterization of abelian. So, now we started with G which is not abelian. So, the derived algebra should be non-zero. Okay. Now, what will happen to the derived algebra? Let us say suppose C x and C y that spans G. Then what will happen to G G? So, the G G will be spanned by this x y because bracket x x is 0, bracket y y is 0. So, only the bracket x y will survive and uh, that is going to span g g. So, now this is actually a non-zero uh, space. So, you can get <coughs> x and y that is the basis of g such that this bracket x y is non-zero. Okay. We al already proved one exercise whenever you have two elements in G such that bracket x y is non-zero then both elements must be linearly independent. You can also use that. So, that means you have a basis. So, we have a basis x y in G such that this happens. 
Okay. So, now what you can do? You can uh, take uh, some non-zero element. Okay, you can take uh, this uh, x y itself, but all I need is some eject in G G, which is a non-zero element. Okay, so then I can extend this eject to a basis of of G. Okay, extend this to a basis of G. So then, what happens if I take the product? Is it, is it tilde? So, that has to be some multiple of is it. Okay. So, note that this has to be non zero, okay. this for some alpha non zero complex numbers. Why if this is 0, then that will say that the bracket gg is 0. Okay. So, now what you can do? You can replace z tilde by this alpha inverse of z tilde. So, you can take uh, for example, x equal to z and y equal to alpha inverse of g tilde. Then you can see that the bracket x y becomes equal to x. Okay. So, it is not hard to see again g is spanned by this x y. Okay. <coughs> that implies we have a basis x y such that the bracket x y is x. Okay. But if you go back and then see our g 2 non abelian. So, if you take uh, this e 2 1 to be x and then this half times e 1 1 minus e 2 2 by uh, y. So, then this bracket x y is nothing but x. Okay. So, the bracket x y is x. So, that means the Lie algebra that we have actually uh, dealing with contains a basis x y such that the bracket x y is x. So, that means this g must be isomorphic to g 2 non abelian. Okay. So, what we proved? We proved that in if G has dimension 2, then there are only 2 possibilities. One possibility is G is abelian. So, that means this is G direction C abelian. Otherwise, G is isomorphic to G 2 non abelian. There are 2 Lie algebras of dimension 2 up to isomorphisms. So, now let us get to uh, dimension 3. Okay. So, dimension 3 is actually a bit more complicated than dimension 2 and there are actually various uh, Lie algebras that we will see. Okay. But uh, what I would like to do? I would like to recall some of the important uh, Lie algebras okay, which will be very useful later when we develop this structure theory of semi-simple Lie algebras. Okay. So, here are uh, these Lie algebras. So, we already seen one example. So, what is that example? That is SL2C. So, at SL2C uh, as we actually denoted uh, this is a three dimensional uh, Lie algebra which has this basis. So, whenever we actually talk about SL2C, we fix this standard notation C uh, x, C h and C y where x denotes this uh, 1 sorry 0 1 0 0 and h denotes the diagonal matrix 1 minus 1 and y denotes this uh, lower triangular matrix 0 1 0 0. Okay. Then it is not hard to compute the structure constants. So, if you do the computation you can see that the bracket x h x is nothing but 2 x, the bracket h y is nothing but minus 2 y and the bracket h h is 0. Okay. Similarly, the bracket x x is 0 and then the bracket x y will be h and uh, the bracket h x is already given okay. and then the bracket y y is 0. Okay. 
So, if you carefully look at it, this thing actually makes add hatch is diagonalizable because add hatch has eigenvalues 2, 0 and minus 2 with the eigen vectors x, h and y. Okay, these are all the eigen values and these are all eigen vectors and that makes add h diagonalizable. Okay, that is a very important observation. So, now let us see some uh, structure about this SL2C. What I mean by that as uh, Lie algebra, uh, what this Lie algebra that one can ask. So, we can prove that uh, this is indeed simple Lie algebra. So, this is the very first example of simple algebra, Lie algebra that we are seeing. So, claim SL2C is a simple Lie algebra over complex. Okay. How do we prove? So, we need to prove that first of all dimension is more than 1, we do not need to worry. So, we need to prove that if you start with any ideal uh, that must be either 0 or full. So, let us start with uh, non-zero ideal I inside SL to C. So, now what we can do? We can take this add h map and then restrict to i. So, then you will get a map from i to i. Note that add h is diagonalizable. So, that will imply add h restricted to any invariant subspace will be diagonalizable. So, that means add h restricted to i also will be diagonalizable. In particularly, I can write i as direct sum of uh, eigenspaces for this add h but uh, 2, 0 and minus 2 these are all the Eigen values okay, of this add h. So, that will tell you that i can be written as only the Eigen values corresponding to these. So, i 2, i 0 plus i minus 2. So, what I mean by i lambda, i lambda is the Eigen space of i that corresponds to to the eigen value lambda of add h okay so now you have this eigen space decomposition now you can see that suppose this i2 is non zero let's say so once you go back and then see what uh, what are all the eigen vectors of this add h, those are all nothing but x, h, and y. That means each eigen space, okay, that corresponds to eigen values of add h, they are all one dimensional, okay. That means the if you take any of this eigen space, okay, so i lambda, either it is zero or the dimension of i lambda must be at most one, okay. So that will tell either i lambda 0 or i lambda will be equal to SL 2 C lambda. Okay. So, that is the observation. If you use that observation, uh, if i 2 non 0 that will imply that i 2 must be span of x okay, because x is the Eigen value vector corresponding to 2. So, that says uh, this x to, x must be inside i2, but once x is in i2, then you can see that x bracket y, which is h, that is is also in i2, but then that will imply h bracket y, which is minus 2y, that is is also in i2. So that implies x h y all are in sorry, all are in i. Okay, sorry. Uh, x is in i2 implies bracket x y is in i and similarly bracket h y is in i. Okay. So, that will imply x h i y all are in i. So, that imply i is SL2C. So, similarly 
if i 0 is not 0 that would imply h is in i. So, that would imply immediately h x which is 2 x and h y which is minus 2 y both are in i. So, that will imply both x and y they are in i. So, that will imply i is SL 2 C. So, similarly one can prove okay, for i 2 non I, I minus 2 non 0 would also imply i equal to SL 2 C. So, that means we proved that i is SL 2 C in all cases. So, that proves that SL 2 C must be a simple algebra. Okay. So, now uh, we will actually give another important uh, Lie algebra called uh, Heisenberg Lie algebra okay, which is also can be identified as uh, subalgebra of some general linear Lie algebra. Okay. So, what is Heisenberg which is again very important uh, three dimensional Lie algebra. Okay. So, we will see later what type of the, uh, Lie algebra this is, but right now just focus on the definition. So, you take these 3 by 3 matrices which are spanned by okay, E 1 2, E 2 3 and then E 1 3. So, this is inside M 3 C. So, you take H to be this. So, then it is a uh, easy to see the following is the Lie product and this is actually a Lie subalgebra of GL 3 C. So, what is E 1 2 E 2 3? So, that is E 1 3 and then the bracket E 1 3 E 1 2. So, that is 0. Similarly, bracket E 1 3 E 2 3 that is also 0. So, if you call this E 1 2 x, E 2 3 y and E 1 3 is z, then basically this uh, Lie products can be read as follows. So, this is just uh, x y being z and z is in the center. Okay. So, this way you can you have given all the product okay? because this is a Lie subalgebra there is nothing to check because the Jacobi identity and will be true. But you can also start with x y z uh, spanned by x y z which, which has this Lie product and then directly check that also will form a Lie algebra. Okay? So, now let us uh, classify or the characterize this Heisenberg Lie algebra. Okay. So, uh, yeah, before that, okay, uh, let us see like uh, what are all the, the types one can get in the uh, dimension 3. Okay. So, I will actually do some of the cases, I will not be able to do all the cases. So, I will leave one case as exercise, remaining cases I will do. Okay. So, here are the cases for dimension 3. If you take uh, G to be a Lie algebra which has dimension 3 and assume G is also non abelian because abelian Lie algebra we understand well. So, then the following things are possible. So, like I said you have the derived algebra as well as you have the center. So, in terms of the derived algebra and the center you can make uh, following the assumption. So, the derived algebra has to be non-zero and the center has to be proper. Okay. So, because G in being a non-abelian. So, now that means the dimension of the derived algebra it can be either 1 or 2. Similarly, the dimension of the center. So, it also can be either 0, 1 or 2. Okay. So, now we classify them according to this the case 1 will be the dimension of the derived algebra being 1 and the derived algebra being a subalgebra of this center. 
the case 2 will be the dimension of the derivative algebra is 1, but it is not contained in center. Okay. The case 3 which is actually most interesting case and in this case we will have lots of possibilities. So, where you just assume the derivative algebra is has dimension 2 and the case 3 uh, sorry case 4 where you assume that uh, the dimension of the derivative algebra is 3. Okay. So, I will tell you like what are all the things that we are going to get. In the case 1 we get this Eisenberg okay. So, in some sense these uh, assumptions will characterize Heisenberg Lie algebra. In case 2 we get what is called this uh, direct sum of 2 dimensional non abelian and uh, 1 dimensional abelian. So, it is basically G 2 non abelian direct sum G 1 abelian where G 1 abelian is nothing but C okay? 1 dimensional. In case 3 there are infinitely many possibilities okay? infinitely many possibilities later we will see like uh, what type of uh, Lie algebras they are, uh, but uh, even in, in this special case where the dimension of the Lie algebra is very small. So, we are getting actually lots and lots of uh, possibilities. In case 4 what we get is actually isomorphic to SL to C. Okay. So, <coughs> we will introduce later what is called this uh, soluble Lie algebras. So, basically this case 1, 2, 3 all of them will be soluble okay. and uh, in case 4 you get what is called uh, simple Lie algebra. So, which will be a first non-trivial example of semi simple Lie algebra. Okay. So, this is how the picture of uh, dimension 3 looks like. So, what we do like uh, I will actually only do case 1, case 2 and case 4. I will leave it to you to think about case 3 which is very, very interesting and uh, more or less uh, the ideas uh, the, that will be used in classifying this case 3 will be already presented in all other cases. So, it is actually a very good exercise for you to think about this case 3. Okay, now, let us uh, focus on case 2 because case 1 is already done. Okay. Yeah, we still have not done case 2, case 1. So, let us focus on case 1. I guess just gave the definition of Heisenberg. Yeah. So, what is uh, case 1? you take the dimension to be 3 and the derivative algebra is inside the center okay. and the dimension of the derivative algebra is 1. So, these are all the conditions. Note that all these conditions are satisfied for the Heisenberg. Okay. So, now what we do we just uh, uh, start with the basis and then see what we can tell about uh, the structure of the Lie algebra. So, take uh, f g z be a basis of this g. Okay. So, then this f g the bracket So, that has to be equal to z and I can assume z is also coming from the center. So, why I can do that? So, again from the previous argument uh, this is actually 
easy to see because the dimension of this derived algebra is 1. Okay. Suppose if you take a basis x y w, so this is the basis of g, then you can see that this uh, the derived algebra okay so that will be actually okay so maybe like we can we can actually do it another way you start with uh, some basis of this derived algebra because this is one dimensional so you can pick some fg inside g such that the bracket fg is non zero so once this is non zero then the bracket gg will become span of this fg okay so now what we claim if you call this z to be this bracket fg so then one can claim that this f g and z that will be linearly independent elements of g okay so once we verify this claim uh, then we get this basis okay because the derived algebra is contained in the center now why we actually get this uh, as linearly independent let us see so you just take alpha f plus beta g plus gamma z to be 0 for some alpha beta gamma coming from c so we need to prove that all this alpha beta gamma are 0 now what we can do we can then simply apply okay add g here if you apply add g then what do you get apply add g so then we get this will be alpha g f plus beta g g will be 0 and then beta e z will be also 0 because the derived algebra is contained in the center okay so this plus g plus 0 equal to 0 so that will imply alpha minus e z is 0 since bracket f e z is nothing but f g is nothing but e z so g f is nothing but minus e z so that will tell you alpha must be 0 because z is non zero element okay so now you have beta g plus gamma z is 0 so now apply add of f if you apply add of f you get beta f g plus again gamma f e z which is 0 so then it, you get beta f g equal to 0 again bracket f g is e z which is non zero so that implies beta is 0 okay so the f e z is 0 because e z is coming from the center so you get alpha beta 0 and since e z is non zero so gamma also 0 that proves that this uh, f g e z they are all linearly independent elements so now if you just uh, put them back so what you are getting g is nothing but span of f g and e z and the bracket f g is e z and e z is in the center so that simply says g is isomorphic to the Heisenberg algebra okay so this is the proof so maybe i will actually continue uh, this classification in the next lecture uh, because we are running out of the time, uh, so we will uh, stop here, thanks.